clean pans for gumbo. So this should be a pretty fun show at uh, Terry's uh, abode here. Terry, to... Terry's kitchen, Terry's house. Having some gumbo and playing some tunes here. Maybe we'll do a, a little bit of raining down, maybe a little bit of the monkey song. What do you think about that? Yep. Well, I think it's pretty solid. How about C? Do a little C. That should work good too. Let's see if he's going to let us in here. Mr. Terry! Hey, all right! Yeah. Come on in! Yeah. Glad you guys are here! <laughs> yes, sir! Welcome Thanks aboard! Having us. Yeah. Yeah. yeah! Welcome to Terry's house! Yeah, we're having some tunes! Oh, yeah, this yeah, is Paul. Paul. Yo, hey. Paul! Good to see you, sir! All right! All right! Are you are we making some gumbo? Gonna make some gumbo? Gumbo's gonna happen. Yeah. Yeah. yeah! yeah! Yeah, you know.
Yeah, I start just like all the others. <laughs> or most of the others. All right. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's not it's not cool. It's hot as hell. Oh my god, I'm dying. <laughs> Killing it. What's my motivation? What's my motivation? Garlic. We need to chop some garlic. Here, let me get this in here. I'll chop some garlic on the camera. We prepped a lot of ingredients, but we didn't get the garlic chopped, so um, garlic is just wonderful um, in gumbo. Actually, we might want to fry these up as well, because that would make for a nice, nice thing. So we'll do that a little later. Let's uh, clean this real quick. You don't want any crop inflammation issues. Very important when you're cooking with any sort of meat, chicken, fish, you want to clean everything. Soap, hot water. After every step, wash your hands too. All the time. Nice to have a towel handy whenever you're cooking. Oh, look at that. We have to stir the roux. Very important. Stirring that roux. See the color's getting a little bit darker. Still pretty light. Let's keep stirring. All right, garlic. We're gonna chop some garlic up. This is garlic can be tricky. I've seen a couple of tricks lately. I've tried them myself. I think I'll try one of them. Uh, get this all this uh, flaky skin. We don't want that. That's not the good part. Lots of garlic. If you're making a gumbo, two entire heads of garlic. No problem. Uh, approximately one onion, equal amount of celery. So, yeah, one green pepper. Incidentally, onion and celery and green pepper is known as maripois. So I learned this trick from a good friend of mine, Paul Ruderman. He's a fine musician, excellent piano player. You put the garlic in the container and you shake it. And it helps to get the all these little skins off of the garlic. That might be a little loud. <laughs> Another technique is the smash technique. And that's take the side of your knife and your hand. Be careful. And put the knife on the uh, on the garlic and crush it with your hand. And then what happens is this just comes right off. So I'm just gonna put that aside and grab a few of these and do a little production line here. Like so. See how easy that comes off after we do that? It saves a lot of time because this can be a time consuming process. The other thing to do is just buy the stuff already already smashed up and diced up. But I find that fresh garlic Really, uh, no substitute. We lose a little flavor when they chop it ahead of time. This is nice. And this is going in a large soup or stew, so it's uh, really diluted. You need more of it. You guys are gonna love this stuff. It's delicious. Thank you to Get fancy.
arms trembling, excited. With passion flooding out on the street. Storms rage on still you are struggling in fear and pain But now at last you
What's a pirate's favorite letter? <laughs> <laughs> What's R. a pi- You think it'd be R, but no, it's the C. <laughs> I'm just gonna change gears here really quick because you can't forget about the roux. It's starting to smell, mmm, starting to smell good. It's starting to change colors here a little bit. I wonder if that camera can, can you see the color of that? It's starting to get a little darker there. That's what we're looking for. Just keep stirring it. It's got a, it's got a buttery, earthy, nutty wonderfulness. and. The roux is actually the thickener for the gumbo. It's um, that's what gives gumbo. That's what takes it from from a soup to a gumbo. I'm, 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 I mean, the word itself, gumbo, sounds like this thick, heavy, rich. And that's exactly what it is. And the roux is part of that. And that's that's what the French gave us. The the roux came from French cooking. And the French, interestingly enough. The Acadians, uh, well, they came from Canada. They started up in Canada. They got kicked out uh, for some reason or another. Somebody didn't like them. They wanted to get the heck out of there. They went down to Louisiana, um, and they became the Acadians. Um, and that's that's the that's really the French part of uh, of this culture of this cooking. Um, good stuff. Uh, so yeah, we a little more garlic here. The French love their butter, and this particular roux is, is butter and some oil. So one of the other elements. Um, so West Africans it, um, brought uh, so brought okra to the party. Okra is a okra is a vegetable. I have I have frozen okra. It works just fine. This is um, this is a vegetable that so came from Africa, and it's it's it's, um, it's kind of thick and kind of gummy, kind of gooey, kind of gumboy, if you will. It's um, that's that's a West African contribution to the gumbo, which is the embodiment of the melting pot of America. Wonderful country, many cultures. America gave us Coors Light. Mm-mm-mm. All right, let's check the roux. Getting a little darker. After it starts getting darker, it um, it goes faster. So um, you have to stir it more often, or what you could do is turn it down just a little bit so you don't overdo it. Be careful not to overdo it. You really have to keep an eye on it. Don't leave the kitchen. Uh, it's a labor of love. You gotta love your gumbo, so it'll love you back. Raining down. Are you rolling, Paul? <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> Just Whispers dampened while clouds clutter rabid. It's water's initiative to drain all weak vermin. Drizzle to downpour, his mouth curdles so sore. Anxious to begin its sequence to doom him. Trigger low rumble to perplex and crumble. The gods watch him mumble. They 
for sea swift tumble. He sways with what's innate, a dry, dusty, slow fate. The rain melts as acid, leaves scars burnt in sacred. of burdens rest heavy with sternness stripped of his weakness he walks with bold firmness the past Christ so solemn its ridges cut in him wet wrinkles bore fire his passionate desire Memories now buried, he fights not to tarry, endured will to withstand, he stares at his severed hands, whales call for water, his vengeance weak power, an unsteady stillness as he bleeds dead in silence. Do a little more garlic here, and then that'll be good. And it, it works out well. If you start, uh, start cooking the roux, and then uh, chop all your vegetables sort of while it's cooking, call that a that parallel that processing. You get um, it's a time saver. So that's good. 
We got enough garlic here. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna try to dice this up for y'all. So safety first here. I like keeping the knife at a slight angle, 45 degree to the cutting board here and to me. It's just sort of ergonomic, natural way to go. Don't get your fingers in there. You sort of wanna curl your fingers like that. So the knife goes like this. Don't get your fingertips in there. You gotta go like that. So, and then just keep going with the dice the other direction. So I'll try to bang these out really quick here. Just well, I got. I'm just gonna dice these up. I'm just gonna mince these. Now we're sort of finished doing the initial slice, and now I'm just gonna mince them up even further. It's a little different. A little different technique here. This is less organized. And you just run through your garlic. Keep sort of. Re push them together, run through it. Look for the aim for the bigger pieces if you can. But the truth is, this particular dish is going in a gumbo. It's going to be delicious, no matter how it's cut. So that looks good. All right, we got to check the roux. Don't forget the roux. Oh, look at that, folks! Oh, starting to get a little. A little browner here, it's exactly what we want. A little more color on it. All right, for the folks at home, you see the color here? Got a nice, getting a little, getting a little darker. Close to time to uh, add the veggies in. So what we have done here is we have pre, pre-cut onions and celery and green pepper, Ameripois. I think that's a French word. I'm not sure about that. These are going into the party, right in the roux. So, all right. Now we're gonna stir that up and coat all these delicious, and healthy, healthy vegetables. Get some on this camera, I guess, over here. And this is gonna make this, this thick. Thick mess of yummy vegetables and French roux. There we go, that's what it looks like. Very thick. All right, so what we're gonna do now, we're just going to put this aside, and we're gonna put a lid on this, and let it, let it kind of simmer, you know, medium, low heat for 15 or 20 minutes or so. Take a little more beer. Oh, garlic. Almost forgot the garlic. Put the garlic in there. The trick to garlic, the trick is try not to drop it on the floor. That's important. Yeah, great. Garlic. Stir. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. Put the lid on, let it simmer. 15 to 20 minutes or so. I would stir it occasionally too, uh, you know, maybe come back to it every every, every five or ten minutes. A little technology here. All right, folks. Now you can go, you know, wash a dish, drink a beer, 
change the CD, talk to your friends. That's what I'm going to do. So we are uh, preheating our pan, which is important. You really don't want to put food into a into a cold pan. It doesn't uh, it doesn't um, especially stainless steel. It will stick like crazy. So um, the trick is to uh, preheat the pan. Um, I've got this pan 
up to medium, which is four on my stove. I like to do a water test. Um, that sort of tells you the actual temperature. So I just put I just put a drop of water in and see how it reacts. That is still too cool. Um, and as it warms up, um, I'll, I'll be able to show you what we're actually looking for. There's a name for this, light and frost or something like that. So the water bead actually forms uh, like a layer of steam under under the water ball and it holds it up and it dances around. It looks sort of like a mercury ball. But the great thing about this uh, this test is it, it only requires water. You just take a little bit of water and drop that in the pan. See how that water dances around? And that's what we're looking for, that ball that dances around there. So that pan is ready to uh, fry. And we're just going to use a little bit of extra light olive oil. Extra light the olive oil has a higher smoke point than um, uh, extra virgin olive oil. It's good for frying. And you just really just, just a tiny bit, really, because there's going to be some, some fat in this... Um, in the sausage, this andouille sausage, but this just helps with uh, it's sticking a little bit more. But we're going to add the sausage here so we don't overheat our pan or overheat the oil, which will cause it to smoke, which is not the best thing. It will be a little bit overheated naturally. So with stainless steel, the trick is after you put the food in, let it sit for a couple minutes until it heats up. That helps with sticking because it, it'll it stick initially, but then after, after a certain amount of time, it's going to release. Yeah, so let's stir the vegetables. Check the vegetables. You can see how that looks over here on the tight shot. They're cooking, they're steaming, but they're not, they're still pretty, pretty raw. So we're going to give them a little bit longer. We're going to start to move this around a little bit. I think, I, I think it's been long enough. I hope, we'll find out. Let's give it a shake. Oh yeah, see how that released? Very nice and easy. That's what we want. And then just a little, just a little flip, getting some color on there. Yeah, so now at this point, we can keep it moving a little bit more, and we're just going to fry that up, get some color on it, get a nice smoky, smoky flavor, which is excellent for gumbo. Uh, boy, that sizzle sounds good, doesn't it? Mm. Yeah, just keep it moving every now and then. Could even put a lid on it. Help it cook a little bit, a little bit quicker. That's what we'll do. Isn't that nice? Then we'll stir this pot. Check this guy over here. Get in there. Let that cook for a few minutes. Yeah. While we're waiting for that, that gumbo is always served over rice. So, what you want to do is, we'll just start over here with that. You want to use um, two parts of water to one part of rice. Put that on the stove, which I don't have room for at the moment, uh, and, and bring it to a boil. Check the sausage. That looks delicious. We can probably add liquid to our to our vegetables you know you, you kind of just want to sweat those and get them to get them to start to release all their all their flavorful oils and then you uh, add water or stock 
I have some stock here, which I've already warmed up for us. I like to, you know, you really, really kind of add it, add it, in, add in stages so it incorporates. So you add a little bit, add a little bit of stock. Not too much. Just kind of stir that so it incorporates. A little bit more. It forms this thick, rich, wonderful gumbo. So we're going to bring that up just a little bit. Check on our, our sausage. Oops. Starting to stick a little bit here, so we're going to work on that a little bit. Looks really good. All those little black bits, that is wonderful flavor. And this is all going to cook with the gumbo as well. I just, I like to get a couple, I like to get a little bit of color on the sausage. It makes for a nice presentation in the bowl when you see that. Yeah, just, I mean, you can, that's just beautiful. Look at that. Beautiful. A little bit longer. Keep stirring the gumbo here. Let's go ahead and do our rice. Well, at least I'll start it on the stove. I'll put it on the stove. I won't start cooking it. Keep these guys moving. Get it even colored. That's good enough. I'm going to throw these in. Bring these boys into the party here. Look at that, they all came off except that little guy right there. And that's great. Be sure to turn off any burners that you're not using. Give that a little stir. Now what we're gonna do is let that cook and simmer for a couple hours. A good two hours. Serve it over rice, which we will do very shortly. Good idea. Let's go play a little music. Monkey song. Stole. 
inside your face with this piece of poo that I've got in my hand, you stupid fool. Now get out of your face so I can eat these bananas so that won't be left. Cause you want to get it in my face by a piece of poo. <laughs> I think that was good, right? Yeah. No, no boners in that one, right? I had a little boner in the beginning, but I'm I, not worried I about a, my little boner. I, I had a boner the whole time. <laughs> All right. We're here in the kitchen. It's uh, Paul Ruderman, Alex Perez, Jason Mendelson. Uh, Terry's Kitchen. Yeah. So, mm. we got beer. We got friends. Going to have some music. Just had some music. I'm gonna have a little more. Oh, gonna have some gumbo. Uh, the way to serve this is uh, over uh, white rice, but uh, we we are going to we're gonna try it straight up. So that's how we roll. So let's load them up here, folks. Who wants the first one? Have y'all had my gumbo before? No, I have not. Oh, you? Oh, oh. oh no. Well, oh, yes. brace yourself when you take that first bite. Mm. People have been known to snap their necks. <laughs> oh, that sounds dangerous. Out of pure joy. Yeah, yeah it's joyful. Didn't know that happened. <laughs> I never, I never heard of that either. <laughs> you must not have had my gumbo. Oh wait, wait, wait! Hang on now, folks. Wait, slow down. <laughs> slow down. Gumbo filet. Oh. Oh. This is actually a Native American contribution to to gumbo is gumbo filet, F-I-L-E, but it's pronounced filet. And it's actually ground up leaves of the sassafras tree, interestingly enough. And it's not incredibly spicy, but it is, um, it's a thickener. Stir that in here? Stir that in, it, it, yeah, if you want, really whatever you want. But it adds a nice, it's a just a, Beautiful thickener, and it's just a—it's a whole other cultural element added to the literal yeah. melting pot. Wow! From from start to finish, how long is this process, Terry? Oh, um, to making a gumbo? Yes. Um, it depends on how many bands you have over. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, if 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 I were making a gumbo, not playing music. Um, you need a good four hours. Um, wow. you no, know, you really, but I mean, you know, all that time is not, not working times. You know, I'll put on a CD, I'll put some music on and, you know, have a beer and talk to my friends. Um, so it, it's definitely not four hours of work. It's, uh, you know, maybe only an hour of actual, actual work, but, but, but the whole process, uh, I was simmering the gumbo and cooking the rice and all that it's maybe four hours you know I I make a day of it when I make a gumbo I don't make a gumbo every day it, it, it it's a special occasion you know and I'll just take a weekend day and I wake up late and I'll start my gumbo or whatever the heck I want and you know but but give yourself at least four hours don't um, don't rush it it's not something to be rushed it's something to be enjoyed well monkey see monkey do I think you got a good idea there I'm gonna Cheers, everybody. Cheers. 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 Speaking of monkeys. You got some monkeys? I got some monkeys. You got a song about a monkey? We got a song about a monkey. So you want to hear the story where that song, song came from? When did you write that? That song came from one of my best friends, Dan. Called me up, I was chatting with him one day. I was living with these two female roommates in a townhouse at the time. Now, these could have been guys, too, so let's preface. You know, it could have been anybody, but I was complaining about, you know, having to share my space and having, you know, blah, 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 all, all the issues you have with roommates mm -hmm. that you can possibly imagine, whether they be ladies or, or gentlemen. And uh, Dan kind of 
threw this out there at me. He said, what do you like walk upstairs? Because I lived in the basement. And you go, what, what, which one of you bitches took my bananas? And, and so <laughs> the, the, the song used to be, you know, which one of you sons of bitches stole my goddamn bananas? But we have since changed it to uh, be more radio friendly and everything. Oh, yes, to yeah, which one of you stupid monkeys stole my mm. stinking bananas? So that's where that song came from. It's always fascinating how songs the inspiration of songs the idea never, was born. No two are the same. One doesn't sit down and write a song. One, <laughs> one lives their life and has a, has a moment or a, an event or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's All something. The, All right. Well, that's it for the kitchen segment. Thanks for coming out, folks. Uh, Hope to see you again somewhere around my kitchen. <laughs> Maybe Jason's kitchen one day. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Wave goodbye, everybody. Bye. 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 You're the one. You should have been on. Well, it's all. Get these notions